Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction of how to define product types in process modeling. That is, how to make the products you want to use in your simulation. To get started, I have a layout in the 3D world. If I run the simulation, notice I am making these yellow cylinders. So how am I doing that? Well, let's reset, go to the Process tab, and if you click Products here in the ribbon, it will display the Product Type Editor. And notice I have one product defined called Cylinder, which has these properties. It has its own properties and properties it got from other components. Now the components can either be in the 3D world or loaded from your file system. For example, if I select the Cylinder product type, go to the Properties panel here, notice it has a component URI property. Now this can point to a component in your file system or a component in the 3D world. It just so happens that the component I'm using is here in the 3D world, but if I delete it, run the simulation, notice it still works. That's because products are different from components. They're separate things. So the product definition is what matters and that is what's being used to create the product, not the component. You can also assign a different component to a product type if you want. Now let's get a bit crazy and change our product definition. I'll select the material property here. Instead of making them yellow, let's make them pink make the change, run the simulation, and you can instantly see it. Let's now change the cylinder radius property from 120 to 50 and cylinder height to be 100. So with those changes I run the simulation and the feeder will now use that product definition to make the product according to my specification. Let's reset and take a quick look at how the product feeder is working. So if you go to the component properties panel access the product creator tab here. It has properties for how you want to create the products. Right now it's set to single, but you can create in batches, use a table, or use a pseudo-random number distribution, like a normal distribution or uniform distribution. I'm creating the products every eight seconds, and the part I'm creating is a product type called cylinder. Notice I do have the option to create a new product type. I'll do that now. So now I'm using product type number one, and you can see it here in the product type editor. So let's define this further. I will change its name to be block for its properties. Hmm, let's add it, give it a skew. So I'll right click the product properties and then click add product property. I'll change its name to be skew. And I'll set this to be a string. And let's use S12T dash BLK dash rs. You can think of a better SKU if you want or your own. And now if I was to create this product you can see we don't see anything. That's because it hasn't referenced any component to render and visualize it in the 3D world. So I'll reset. I'll now go to my eCatalog panel and let's go to models by type and I'll use basic shapes and let's take this block geo component. So add it to the 3D world, this is just one workflow of how you can associate a component with a product type. And now I'll go back to the Process tab, select my block product type, and instead of locating the file, I can just pick it in the 3D world, like so. And now if I run the simulation, oh, there's the block. But it's not according to my specification, so I need to make the product type you know, more accurate. So with the block, what I'll do is I'll right-click right the component properties of it and notice I can get properties from the component itself to use for my product definition. So length, width, height, and material. Let's actually take all of them. So I'll click all template properties. So now with the length or width or height, let's take the length and make this be 200. The width, make that 300 and the height, let's make that 100. For the material, uh, let's choose a different one. Let's say aluminum, that's fine. Run the simulation, and there it is. Doesn't have the right material, but it looks like aluminum. Let me try a different one. Let's try maybe orange. Yep, sorry, my mistake. Aluminum looked a bit too much like this one here. So if I select it, let me check. No, it was white. Aluminum. 
I guess it was kind of close, yeah. But with orange, I can definitely see the change. And one thing to notice here is that the blocks are not being picked up by the robot. Now the reason for that, if we access the flow editor panel, is for the block, it belongs to a flow group that doesn't have any process steps. So we'll cover that in a separate video, but an easy way to make this still work with my layout is to move the block product type to flow group 1 because it does have process steps and transportation links of how to go from each process. So what I'll do, I'll take the block and just drag and drop it into flow group 1. And now if I run my simulation, here comes the part, and the robot picks it up, puts it in the machine. No problem. All right, let's reset. Now remember what I said about product types being different from components. So for my block product type, remember I associate it with this component in the 3D world. But if I delete it, the product definition is still being used to create the product during the simulation. OK, this completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And I hope you have a wonderful day.